Now on the American Health Journal. Surgical methods for hip replacement are evolving continually, helping patients get back on their feet quicker than ever. Dr. Stephen Gauzowitz of Hogue Memorial Hospital Presbyterian in Newport Beach discusses the newest developments. A lot of patients will come to the office thinking they have a problem with the hip and they'll point to their buttock or the back of their leg and pain shooting down to their foot and their chief complaint will be that their hip hurts. And many of those patients end up having something wrong with the spine. Uh, true hip pain, most of it is actually in the groin and it radiates to the thigh and also to the knee. In fact, some patients their chief complaint is pain in the knee but there's nothing wrong with their knee and you move their hip around and it's stiff and painful. So a typical hip pain is in the groin and goes to the thigh. And it's usually accompanied with a, a limp, with uh, difficulty with activities such as putting your shoes and socks on because your hip doesn't move enough, uh, difficulty with stairs, and many patients will have had to sequentially reduce their activities that they enjoy because of it. We asked Dr. Gauzowitz who is a candidate for hip surgery. Statistically, the biggest number of patients that get, have uh, problems with their hip have osteoarthritis. And although we see it in younger, younger, younger and younger patients, it's the older you are, the more likely you are to have it. A lot of patients that have osteoarthritis can be managed really successfully just by changing some of their activities, uh, using a cart rather than walking the golf course, taking ibuprofen or naproxen or aspirin intermittently. Those type of things can be very, very useful. For patients that have a lot of hip pain, using a cane, and a cane goes on the opposite side, makes a tremendous amount of difference. But these days, a lot of people are adverse to using a cane, but certainly in our older patients, giving them a cane can off, often make it so they don't need a hip replacement. But there's a bunch of medications that are useful, like just over-the-counter ones that I mentioned. There's prescription anti-inflammatories. Losing weight can be helpful. Getting a handicap parking can be, been, can be helpful. There's a lot of things you can do other than surgery that will make patients able to tolerate uh, an arthritic hip better. Uh, usually patients don't need surgery for their hip unless their x-rays show advanced arthritis. We wanted to know from Dr. Gauzowitz what is the success rate of this surgery? Total hip replacement is a tremendously successful, well-proven and safe procedure. And uh, in recent years we've made it less invasive. I think many people would say that by its very nature the operation where you go in and remove the diseased parts of the bone and put in pieces of titanium and stainless steel and polyethylene and various other substances into the person's body, no matter how you do it, it's not really minimally invasive, but we've made it much less invasive. We've made it an operation where patients can get over it quicker, the operations are shorter, the incisions are shorter, and patients do much better than they once did and quicker. But where we are now with it is uh, patients come into the hospital the same day. The operation can be done very comfortably in under an hour for most patients. Uh, there's not as much blood loss as there once was. These uh, patients will typically start walking the same day, start walking around. And depending on their overall health and their fitness, they can go home the next day to several days later, depending on what kind of shape they're in and, and what their resources are at home for home care. Certainly patients who are older and have a lot of other things going on with their, with their health, some of those on the other hand will go to a rehab facility for a while, but it but, uh, kind of depends on the patient's needs. But a, a younger, more active patient with just a bad hip will often go home the next day and be recover from it extremely rapidly. We think that there's an outstanding chance that our procedures will last 20 years. We hope that they'll last longer than that, but we're not going to know that for a fact until we follow these patients for 20 years. Uh, certainly the current technology of titanium press fit implants and uh, the improved polyethylene and the other, mod other techniques that we have are lasting, are, look are looking great at 10 years.